Hello and welcome to my newest video. Today I'm going to take a quick first look at Corobox. I think that's how you pronounce it. Now what is Corobox? It's basically a decentralized app, a dApp running on the Ethereum blockchain and it tries to be the first Steam on the blockchain basically. So as you can see here from the screen, Corobox is the first gaming platform that allows players to purchase games with Ethereum. And most importantly, the problem right now in the whole video game industry is that game distributors such as Steam being one of the biggest ones traditionally take 30% of all game revenue, sometimes even more, from publishers and restrict players from trading their game items. So they don't just take it from publishers, they also take it from developers if they're not the same. Um, you can actually, well, use Corobox, or uh, that's what it tries to be, that it aims to create a true alternative for game distribution that allows players to utilize popular cryptocurrencies and give game developers freedom to sell the games with zero distribution fees. Now, again, I don't really know how they will finance themselves eventually if they don't really get any kind of fee, Corobox, uh, uh, I mean, but definitely a great idea in my opinion. Um, just right now, there's not much on the website. You can just check out the white paper, you can get some more information about news, and you can also contact the developer directly of Corobox. Um, when you go through it here, here, here's how it works basically. So you have these two target audience or two target groups basically uh, you op one on one hand you have the developers and on the other hand you have the players the developers have the main advantage of using corebox uh, zero distribution fees bypass expensive distributors through direct game transaction with players no chargebacks zero fraudulent transactions funds go directly to publisher wallets which, which is always great obviously um, new markets access uh, to new marks with traditionally high fraud rates, Asia, Latin American and Russia. Also a great idea in my opinion, new technologies, ease of adoption for blockchain technology that enables innovative game economic, uh, economy designs, secondary markets, fair share of proceeds from all secondary market transactions of their in-game items and for players obviously, obviously the main advantages of generally using blockchain integration is that you have true ownership, you have 100% ownership of any kind of items and hopefully a core box the same way as Steam does it facilitates the, the the selling digital assets that you actually gained in these games. Now again block blockchain itself um, by definition already has the, the built-in option to sell your items especially if they become available on, on platforms such as OpenSea or Rarebits for example which actually have recently both received uh, over I think two to three million in funding so they're definitely strong in this whole industry as well and definitely think they will become a, a household names basically for these kind of digital asset trading platforms but again coming back to Corobox um, this is definitely a great idea in my opinion flexible payment our platform will accept the selection of the most popular cryptocurrencies I think for now they're starting with Ethereum obviously or at least running on the Ethereum blockchain but they will also try to integrate um, purchasing with other cryptocurrencies this is one of the main um, well one of the main advantages of using different cryptocurrencies is that you can have some sort of mass adoption some sort of majority actually using your platform obviously if you just restrict it to one cryptocurrency um, for example ethereum you kind of anni annihilate uh, all the other target audience uh, in terms of players and even in terms of developers that don't really want to use ethereum who knows we don't really know uh, how these whole cryptocurrencies will develop into. Um, now, one ma main question I always have is, well, coming down to the to the general uh, challenge you have to face in terms of, do you spend your 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 cryptocurrency or do you use it as a as your store for value? Obviously, if Ethereum uh, keeps on increasing in price overall, even though it's down from its all-time high, the question will be, is the majority willing to actually use their cryptocurrencies and their Ethereum to pay for these games? If, let's say, you have a game on Steam and you pay for it with $30, um, if you would actually pay it with cryptocurrencies, you might have made, uh, well, you actually might have paid more money because Ethereum has been increasing in, in, in value and in price after you bought the game. So you basically, let's say, you um, purchased the game for $100, that's, I don't know, 0 0.05 Ethereum right now. So you pay with Ethereum 0 0.05 Ethereum and it just doubles in price and you kind of paid uh, $200. Uh, you know, that's that's always the question if you're willing, are you, are you willing to spend your Ethereum and your cryptocurrencies and use it uh, as it, it's kind of meant to be or do you uh, keep it as a store of value and 
then eventually you won't really use it to purchase these games. You actually will use it by um, paying out your Ethereum and turning it into dollars or turning it into euros and any kind of fiat cryptocurrency and then pay uh, any kind of game with your fiat currency because it's it doesn't really increase or decrease in value as much as cryptocurrencies currently do. So yeah, these kind of questions I think will be important uh, for the success of uh, ideas like Cryptocorobox, there are also others that kind of facilitates the whole idea of using cryptocurrencies as a as a means of transaction, as a means of payment, which is always great, obviously. Now, in terms of Ethereum, in my opinion, I'm not quite sure Ethereum is actually meant to be um, a way of, of doing more efficient and, and more transparent payments. I think it's more of a development framework, and that's what it kind of tries to be. That's where they're, they're, it's its unique selling point kind of lies while cryptocurrency is most popular for example bitcoin and others are only focused on the payment aspect so again i'm not quite sure if ethereum is the right uh, cryptocurrency to use for it but it's definitely one of the more popular especially in the crypto game and blockchain game um, environment right now so i definitely understand why corobox decided to go for ethereum first uh, and eventually, as they say already on the website, if they also try to adapt using uh, different cryptocurrencies, I think it just kind of helps the whole um, the whole idea and the whole product Corobox um, grow because more people again will be able to actually use it. Um, what's also quite important: peer-to-peer -peer sales, ability to sell in-game items for flexi uh, flexible currency that works across games. As I said before, if they have this kind of ma major platform that a lot of people are using, the majority is using. Um, optimistically speaking, then uh, you can kind of use this platform as well to sell your in-game items, to trade them and get a decent amount of cryptocurrencies back, which you then can turn back into fiat currency, which is always a great idea. Again, will depend on how successful uh, Corebox will actually get. Uh, fraud protection, protection from, protection from fraudulent items, non-payment and other scams, community development. Community development obviously a really important point if they have some kind of mod support in most of the games. Monitor community development of features enabled by blockchain security. So you have this kind of thriving environment where more and more mods are added to games and more games are generally added because um, publishers and, and developers are kind of um, incentivized to to use Corobox and to make it more pop well make it more popular um, ultimately. So yeah. Um, Team also looks quite decent and experienced. Uh, apparently, Ben Huang has been working for Blizzard and R Riot Games, which is always great, and even for Twitch, <clears throat> which is definitely some great experience in the gaming industry. That actually kind of surprises me. Uh, that kind of sets Corebox on on uh, on another level in terms of uh, where it wants to go. And when it has such an experienced CEO, that's always a great um, way to to make your game become, or in this case, your app become successful and actually being used. Um, so yeah, not much more to it based on this first look. I definitely see some great potential for Corebox. Again, I see some challenges for it, but maybe it can overcome them. Um, check it out yourself. I'm going to post a link to Corebox in the video description uh, below, as I always do. I'm also going to post a link to the Telegram channel, so you can talk to the developers, you can talk to the community. Let me just quickly check how many people are. Okay, that's not too many people right now. That's only 33. But maybe they will grow as well once Corebox gains in popularity. Um, other than that, check out the white paper. That's always an important point. Um, as I always say, please don't take this video as financial advice. But if you want to invest into Corebox, um, I don't know if they have a private sale going on ICO anytime soon or if they have already done that. Maybe they don't really want to do that and they do it. They kind of fund themselves in a, themselves in a, in a traditional way. Um, I don't know how it works exactly again, um, but if you think about investing, remember that you do your due diligence, do your own research, and only invest as much uh, cryptocurrency as you can afford to lose. Definitely check out the white paper before you invest. <clears throat> and other than that, hope you liked the video, hope you liked the idea behind Corobox, and I'll see you next time. Bye.